Hi everyone and welcome back to yet another fabulous attempt at me posting regularly on YouTube. <laughs> um, thank you so much. First and foremost, thank you so much to everybody who has stuck around here on YouTube and supported me. Um, those who support me on Instagram, on my tiny baby following on TikTok. <laughs> I super, super appreciate all of you guys. I know that I've never really been able to super commit to YouTube full time. Um, but today I kind of just wanted to like chat a little bit, really just kind of dive back into things a little. And I also want to review and give you my first impressions of arguably one of my favorite collections, probably to maybe ever launch, <laughs> but absolutely my favorite thing to launch this year. So I'm going to get into that in a second. Um, I figured I might as well just start with kind of like life updates and, um, kind of like reintroducing myself since it's been a really long time since I've been on here. Um, I figured it might as well be a better time than ever to officially like reintroduce myself and talk a little bit about how my life has changed and how I'm 1000% going to be able to commit to being back on YouTube now. Um, <clears throat> obviously, you know, coronavirus and this pandemic has changed a lot of people's lives in a lot of different ways. Um, it's definitely changed my life in a, in a pretty big way this year. And um, at the risk of saying that it's changed in a positive way, um, it has. You know, I don't want to say that I'm having the best year ever. I think it's really tough for anybody to be saying that they are having the best year ever. Um, but despite all of the insanity that is going on, um, it's been a challenging year for me, but it's also been a year where I've really had to be pushed off of the cliff of my career and my future and just dive into the things that I really want to be doing. So um, kind of one of the bigger changes is for the past years, four years, <clears throat> I've worked for Anastasia Beverly Hills. I love my time with Anastasia Beverly Hills. I love the relationships they've created. I love all of the amazing opportunities that I got working with them and traveling and teaching and creating products and so many different things that I got to do with the brand. And I'm so, so thankful to have gotten that opportunity and to have been able to do it for as long as I did. And um, this year has changed things a little bit and I'm no longer with Anastasia, but that doesn't mean that we don't still have a great relationship. I still work with them on a freelance basis. I wish them all the best and I will continue to use their products and continue to work with them on a freelance basis. Um, but with all that being said, that's given me a whole lot more opportunity to be able to work freelance and be able to take my career a little bit more in be able to kind of control my career a little bit more in terms of where where in the world I want to go, <laughs> you know, and and be able to make connections and do the things that I want to be able to do and ultimately be my own boss. I, you know, I've always wanted to have this freelance career. I've always been terrified to launch a freelance career and I've attempted it in the past and gave up and got a job. And this time I'm committed to doing it. I've been <clears throat> working freelance since July, so things have definitely been, I, I've given it quite enough time at this point for things to be comfortable for me, and I'm, I mean, excited, and I'm ready to be starting this journey again on YouTube with you guys, and being able to focus a lot more on the types of educational videos I want to make, and just the general content I want to create in general. I've I've always wanted to be able to focus this amount of time on YouTube and social media in general and now I'm finally getting that opportunity which is super exciting and that's why I say that I so so appreciate the support that I get from all of you even the smallest amount of just a like here or there or a comment or a follow is is really everything to me, especially over the years that my career has developed. So, I mean, I hear every day from some of you guys who have been here for a long time. So just it really fills me with so much joy to be able to sit here and say that I have like full capability to commit to all of the content that I've always wanted to create for a long time. So 
with all of the mushiness <laughs> out of the way, that's kind of the biggest update. But with that being said, I am working on tons of videos for you guys. I want to be able to commit to a really regular schedule so that you can be sure that every week you will see me on YouTube. Um, but this kind of needed to be the first video so I could kind of reintroduce myself and come back in and tell you guys a little bit about what's been going on with me. So with that being said, that's what's been going on. So without further ado, let us get into really the star of the show which is the absolutely beautiful dun, 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 Beetlejuice collection from Melt Cosmetics. I literally just received this today and I am so excited to go through this box, do a look with you guys, review everything, and show you my thoughts. So let's get into this. Okay, so um, I will put all of the details of everything that we go over today in the um, description bar down below. And so you can look forward to like prices, availability, all of that kind of stuff. And my general thoughts about everything. So <clears throat> let's get into the box. I, first and foremost, I love that they did this kind of like asymmetrical, ooh, this like asymmetrical box shape is really cool. Um, it's obviously giant if you couldn't tell. This really cool like graphic on the front it's a, it's a little bit hard to tell but easier to tell in in person that it's kind of like that like holographic I, I don't even know what to call that but it's like a holographic like thing that like moves <laughs> so you get into the inside and oh, it really just makes you want to cry looking at it one thing that melt always does really exceptionally well is their packaging and particularly their pr boxes i also love that they pretty much always have their PR boxes available for sale because something like this, if you're a Beetlejuice fan like I am, this this will not be going in the trash. Why would this, ha why? I literally can't even speak. It would hurt me to throw this away. It's so beautiful. It's like layered in here, all of the little pieces. It's not a flat piece. Like you can tell that it's like three dimensional in there, which is amazing. You have, <clears throat> I'll try to do this without spilling everything. You have the top that opens up here. So we've got several amazing things. And oop, that just, I knew that was going to fall out. There's a drawer oop, on the bottom here. And in the drawer, you have your brushes, your mirror, and the little uh, pouch that it comes with. So let me set this down before I break it because I just said I wanted to keep it. And we'll go through everything one by one. There are a couple little things to go through here and I definitely want to do a look with what is in here and give you guys kind of my first impressions of everything. I'll definitely do swatches as well. Um, I started by prepping my skin just because there isn't really anything in this box that is skin related. So I've done everything uh, save for what I'll be able to create a look with that's in the Beetlejuice box. So let's start going through everything. I'll go with the easier things to show first, which would be the Supernatural Lash Mascara, which is in such beautiful packaging. I love the little like sandworm detail and the matte packaging, the like matte dark red packaging. It says Beetlejuice on it. And this also has a eyelash curler as well. I love eyelash curlers and I'm happy to get a new one because mine is definitely on the outs. So excited to use this guy. Here we go with the mascara. Let's see what the brush looks like. Ooh, the brush looks nice. I like this kind of brush. I don't usually like a um, kind of like rubber tipped brush. This is exactly the kind of mascara brush that I usually love. So I'm already assuming that this is probably going to work pretty well for me just with the brush alone, but we will give it a shot. Mascara, to be completely honest, is not something that is like a really major product to me. So <clears throat> I wear fake lashes every single time I put my makeup on. So as far as I'm concerned, as long as my lashes are black and it doesn't make a huge mess on my face, then I'm good. <laughs> so we'll see how this is. Um, Cause also if I'm surprised by it creating like beautiful, full, gorgeous lashes, then that's even more of a bonus. But disclaimer out there that I 
am not the best reviewer of mascara, to be completely honest. Um, okay, so after that, let's move on to, I'll do the palettes last. So there are two eyeshadow palettes, but we'll do those last. Let's move on to the three water, um, I think, are these waterproof? Gel liners, ultra matte gel liners. So you get three colors of these ultra matte gel liners. So there is this amazing chartreuse, chartreuse green. So like a gorgeous, gorgeous lime green. Oh, that is like my favorite kind of like acidy lime green. It's so pretty. I'll probably, I, I want to try and use that one today. <laughs> that one's gorgeous. You also get, what one is that one called? This one's called the afterlife, the green. We also have next up is a beautiful purple. Ooh, it's kind of like metallic-y too. Wow, that's absolutely gorgeous. I love that. And this one is called Utterly Alone. Super pretty. Their gel liners are really nice too. I use the black one constantly. I'm almost entirely out of it. Um, but they are super matte. They dry down really easily. They don't feel like like chunky or thick on the eye and they don't crumble off. So I'm happy to have these new shades. And I really like, this one is called 125 Years. So it's a really kind of like light greeny gray almost. Um, really gorgeous. Love that. So the three of those are super pretty. <clears throat> Let's move on to our lip products. Let's do the lipsticks. First off, packaging is an absolute yes. That is so beautiful. I love the see-through. I love this color. It's super cute. So first one here is called Ghost with the Most. And it is a dark, like, gray-green color. Again, the really pretty... I can focus the really pretty like sandworm imprint in the lipstick i don't even want to use it it's so pretty but i'm going to <laughs> um okay so let's do a little swatch of this guy Ooh, that's a really cool color first of all i love their ultra matte lipsticks i love them so much they don't really do as many of their matte lipsticks anymore as they do their liquid lipsticks but I have always been in love with their matte lipstick formula that was the first product that they ever came out with was matte lipsticks and oh, they, they smell the same it's that same like really like true matte formula so this is a really cool color especially for like fall and holiday coming up I love these kinds of like dark colors for fall and it's definitely like a really super easy way to wear a green lip <laughs> if there is any kind of like easy way to wear a green lip this is definitely it because it's really nice and like muted and dark so that's the first color ghost with the most Ugh. next we have miss argentina this is the color that i'm the most excited about um i love reds especially with my hair color if you couldn't tell um and i'm a real picky red lover so here's miss argentina i already think i'm gonna love it's a real vibrant kind of like neon-y red which is my favorite kind of red so let's swatch her oh yeah that's and you see like that pigmentation too with just that one like swipe up and down stunning and also how matte those are moving this around like if there was any little bit of a sheen you would see it if it was a little bit of like satin finish and to me there's nothing more disappointing than when a lipstick claims to be matte and it's not matte and these are super matte so that is that's like my favorite kind of red there if you could it's literally the same color as my top that is like a go-to red for me so i may have to wear that one this time but i'm super excited about the other one okay i'm getting all i'm too excited about this okay last matte lipstick the shade is Calypso. Oh, that's so pretty too. Kind of like a dark berry shade. Again, and we'll swatch this one. Super pretty. Oh, this one's kind of a metallic-y too. Like it's matte, 
but you see that kind of like flash you get of like blue kind of iridescence to it that's really pretty I love this kind of color yeah definitely those two I could see myself wearing all the time this green one is more statement and fun so like not all the time but these are like go-to statement colors for me for sure Okay, so here's the swatches of the Electrip Lip Paint. It's so hard to say. Um, but they're like a liquid lipstick uh, with a really like beautiful sparkly foiled finish. So this top one here is called It's Showtime. And to be honest, these remind me a lot of the KVD Beauty uh, Glimmer Veils. They were like a, a lip topper and they looked very similar to this in that they were really super sparkly and metallic but I don't think they sell those anymore correct me if I'm wrong they might um but I used to wear those a lot but um haven't worn them in a really long time so and I don't have ones that are like these exact colors so these are absolutely beautiful and the more you kind of like touch them and play with them see how it gets like more sparkly so yeah that first one is it's showtime the one in the middle right here is called Strange and Unusual, which is super pretty where it's like a little red, a little pink, a little gold. Absolutely beautiful. These are really beautiful holiday colors as well. Like a really gorgeous foiled metallic lip to me just kind of screams holiday. So, and then the last one is called Weirder and Weirder. This one is my favorite. This is probably the lip color that I want to end up putting on today with whatever look that I do because this is super gorgeous, blackened, super sparkly with like purple and pink in there. I absolutely love these. So I will be getting tons and tons of use out of all of these gorgeous lip colors from the collection. Okay, so let's go over the accessories. So first up we have the absolutely beautiful mirror. I love their mirrors so much. This one has like the ombre handle to it and you have the super cute like Lydia Dietz dancing all the way around the outside. Um, I love their mirrors. I have uh, this one too is one of my favorites that I use all the time. You can see all the makeup smudges on it. But I love the sizes of these two because these are really good. If you're a professional artist, this is a really good size mirror to keep in your kit. It's not very big and it's also super cute. <laughs> so if you're a Beetlejuice fan, this is a super cute mirror and you also have two, I'll try not to have like a super crazy reflection, but you also have right here the melt with a heart and Beetlejuice. So very cute. There is also this absolutely beautiful clutch bag. They almost always come out with some kind of a a bag with pretty much every collection and the bags that they do are always absolutely beautiful over the top this really could be a clutch that you chose to wear out if you wanted um, but really really nice sturdy fabric I think that it's a pretty decent size this will fit quite a lot I hold on to every single one of the bags I get from them because without fail I pretty much use every single one of them in my kit for various different like tools um, what else do I use it for? Eyeliners, lip liners, um, smaller amounts of like liquid lipstick or lip gloss, or even just to put things in here um, to carry around from different locations on a shoot. These are super, super handy. This one is absolutely gorgeous with the sandworm detail. And inside it's black and white striped. You have the zipper across the top of the pouch that says melt and this is metal and you have the uh, black and white stripe all the way in. So just a cute little clutch here. And lastly for tools, we have the beautiful brush set. So this is a really, for me, this is like one of the most useful brush sets ever. Um, this kind of a brush in particular is my absolute favorite type of eyeshadow brush for like smudging under the eye or getting into the crease really nice and deep there. So I already know that I'm probably gonna use this brush a lot. Um, same thing goes for this really pretty blending brush. I love the split black and white fiber, it's super cute. And you have the, um, it's kind of like a lace detail around the bottom that has Lydia Dietz dancing throughout the lace detail, which is super pretty. I mean, the attention to detail in all of this is 
phenomenal. I can't even imagine how long it took to finalize all of the incredible artwork that's happening in every single one of these individual pieces. It's beautiful. But this brush as well, I love a real like chubby guy like this for blending, but also to if I'm doing like one color all over, this is a really super way to apply that one color all over and then just kind of like buff out the edges. I love this brush as well. These two together are like a really good smoky eye duo. So kind of like a closer, darker color in here and then for like your transition shade bigger around the edge. These two would work really nicely together. And then lastly, this guy, little flat kind of like concealer or lip brush, or even it's big enough as well that you could do applications like on the lid as well. Um, but this is a very useful brush set. I'm always really skeptical about brush sets in general, but I don't know why I would ever be skeptical, skeptical of something that Melt created because to me, they literally can do no wrong. I cannot remember the last time they came out with a collection that I didn't entirely love. So this is a super, super useful brush set. I'm excited to use it because I've loved the brushes that they've come out with before, and I'm sure that these are no different, but we'll give them a try. Um, but yeah, highly recommend a brush set with these kinds of shapes because for me, for eye looks, this is pretty much what I use on the regular. Alrighty, so last and most certainly not least are the two eyeshadow palettes that this collection comes with. So I'll do the first palette is the Waiting Room palette. This is what the outer packaging looks like, really pretty metallic red box here. And I love when the outer packaging doesn't exactly match the inner, um, the inner packaging of a palette. I like when that attention to detail is taken when there is like multiple layers of artwork that you're getting. Melt always does that mwah, phenomenally. <laughs> and this is no excuse or, or no difference. So um, this is the outer packaging for Waiting Room. And this is the palette. This is... I mean, so substantial, like a really nice, like heavy palette, not too heavy where you feel like it's going to be ridiculous in your kit if you are professional, um, but really, really nice, substantial plastic packaging, which is different from the packaging they normally do, which is more of a like cardboard palette. Um, so this is very substantial plastic packaging with the sandworm detail says waiting room on it. And it is magnetized closure, which is nice. You don't have to like struggle to get like a clip open closure, which for me with nails is kind of tricky. So you open it up, massive, massive mirror in here. And it is like a good mirror as well. I love, love, love. You can see all my shoes. Hi, hi everybody. <laughs> my shoes I never wear out anymore. Um, I love when palettes have super substantial big mirrors like this. When I used to travel a lot, which I don't do anymore, <laughs> but when I traveled a lot, um, the number one thing that I would always forget to do my makeup would be a mirror. So I would end up panicking last minute being like, oh my god, I hope I brought something that has a big enough mirror for me to do my entire makeup in. So I always really appreciate when eyeshadow palettes in particular have a good mirror in them. Let's talk about this like film piece that they put over the palette to protect it. They could have done just a plastic sheet, but they didn't. They weren't going to do that. They were going to give you everything that they could give you in this collection. And they did these beautiful see-through clear sheets that have clips from the movie. And like, I wanna like frame this. I don't wanna get rid of this either because it's really hard to tell on camera but it's really vibrant. Like if if held up to the light, like you could do a really cool shadow box but it's like lit from behind with these or something. It's And there's one in the other palette too that I'll show you guys. But this is such a cool additional little detail. Again, like their attention to detail is always immaculate. So whatever the price is, it's worth it because you know that you're getting that detail like in every single little element and I already know that their their product is phenomenal. We will give it a try today but I always feel confident that their product is always going to impress me. So here is the inside of our beautiful waiting room palette. So this is to me this is like the perfect like 
goth smoky eye palette. <laughs> I mean, you have your black, your white, your silvers, and your reds. This is like standard, standard goth fair <laughs> for me. So um, I'll give you guys a couple swatches of this guy. Let me get the lipsticks off of my hand and we'll do some swatches. But you do have, what is this, 10 shades. Um, mostly, is it half matte? Yeah, so half matte, half, nope, I lied. Four metallic shades and six matte shades in this palette. So let me swatch these really quick and be right back. So here are our swatches. So I have the top row and bottom row here. <clears throat> And this is without any primer, so this is straight onto just my bare hand here, um, which, I mean, is <laughs> pretty impressive, particularly for the mattes. So across we have Obituary, No Exit, Sod Girl, Dante's Inferno, and Lydia, and then Charman, Tombstone, Shrunken Head, Juno, and sandworm. So these all look absolutely gorgeous. Like I said, this is a perfect like goth palette <laughs> to be honest. It's you've got your like gorgeous red shades, various different like super usable metallics, a black and a white which for me are always staples to have in an eyeshadow palette. So this one is beautiful. Love her. Knew I would. So let's let's do the next one. So our last palette is the Recently Deceased palette. So this is the outer packaging, which is super pretty with that like holographic logo on the front. And I also love the extra detail of the inside is green, which is pretty cute. So this is the outside packaging. And the inside palette looks like this. Absolutely gorgeous. Again, nice substantial plastic packaging with the sandworm detail, super pretty. And I mean, you're only gonna be able to see how gorgeous this is on camera so well, um, but it's like very, it's got that like really cool see-through green packaging that we have here. So it looks very like three-dimensional on the top of it. Um, and then we have on the inside, another one of the absolutely beautiful images from the movie here. I'm totally going to keep these and try to figure out something to do with them. So here is the inside of the recently deceased palette. Between the two, this is probably going to be one of my favorites because I absolutely love the combination of purple and green. So that's what you get here. <laughs> and um, I'll swatch this really quick, but I am loving this color palette so far. So let's get some swatches going. One of the things I didn't mention about the palette is that it has eight shades as opposed to the waiting room palette has 10 shades. So here are our swatches. <clears throat> Absolutely gorgeous. Again, on my hand with no primer. We have the first one is Beetlejuice and then Paranormal, Draw a Door, Neurotic. Here is Recently Deceased. This is Lost Souls, Little Accident, and Bio Exorcist. So it is going to be a tough call between what palette I do today. Um, I really don't know because I love both of them and I can't use both of them. But I can definitely do another video using whichever palette and kind of like some of the remaining products that I don't use today. So, oh, I don't know what to do. Mm. My gut is telling me with what I'm wearing, I should do the waiting room palette. I think I'm gonna do the waiting room palette and then I will do another video and show you guys how I use these colors here because they are absolutely phenomenal. That is everything in the collection. Only other pieces that I would show you that are just kind of like cute extra things that they um, definitely took the time and attention to make is the little ingredient card here is really cute. There is two different kind of collateral pieces. This one here is their very sweet note, but like absolutely beautiful, embossed. I don't know how many times I can say absolutely beautiful. I really need to stop. The word absolutely is absolutely my word. <laughs> so, and then last one, this one too, of the campaign, which is incredible. My insanely talented friend, Tony, did the hair for this campaign. 
I mean, Dana and Laura are so talented, so incredibly gorgeous. This campaign image is beautiful. So there's that. And then lastly, stickers. You get super cute little stickers. I love the stickers that they come out with. I have literally stickered my entire house with Laura and Dana's lips. <laughs> I hope that's not weird, but your guys' lips are all over my house. Um, but these are the four little stickers they came out with that are so cute. So this is a little sandworm one. It says Melt Heart Beetlejuice. There's another Melt Heart Beetlejuice that is the Beetlejuice sandworm. There is this one, might be my favorite one, of the crossed Miss Argentina legs, which are super cute. And then lastly is the Lydia Dietz dancing, which I love. I I love stickers so much. <laughs> my husband and I like literally sticker bomb everything all the time. So I'll have to be very choosy about where I put those because I really enjoy them. So let me figure out what I'm going to do for a look because this is already probably going to be the longest video of all time, but it's okay because I think it's going to be worth it. I hope. <laughs> so let me figure out what I'm going to do really quick and I will come back in just a second. Okay, we're back. So this is what I ended up doing. I used pretty much entirely the waiting room palette and then I opted for the kind of sparkly green color neurotic from the recently deceased palette. So let's get started doing this on the other eye. It is actually a pretty easy look. I'm going to start with <clears throat> eye primer first. I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills eye primer. So there we have that. I'm going to start with the waiting room palette and I'm going to use the shade No Exit, which is this very dark color. I actually didn't use any black in this look, even though it looks like it. <laughs> I did not. So let's start with that first color, No Exit. I'm going to use this little brush that I told you guys I was gonna be using a ton because it's definitely one of my favorite kinds of brushes. I brought you guys a little bit closer in here so we can get nice and cozy together. And again, I'm gonna start with that first shade, No Exit. So we're gonna take that little flat brush, really tap this off because this is a really pigmented color. And I'm gonna start to create like a winged eyeliner shape. And just kind of take that on the outer corner and just kind of wing it out like that and I'm gonna connect that to the bottom as well if you are concerned about fallout if you do your foundation first because um, I just got a little tiny bit right there no big deal though um, you can lay down some powder or you can always do your eyes first your call but starting with that outer corner of the eye, really making sure to tap that off because you don't want to have a big old mess to clean up later. We're going to take this basically all the way across the eye. This is going to be super smudged out later with like a bunch of different things, obviously. So it doesn't have to be perfect right now. We're just getting the basic shape and we're going along the bottom. I kind of generally like to do the top and the bottom at the same time. So it can really start to shape my actual kind of bigger eye shape that I'm creating. So I'm just going to keep kind of blending this guy out and then we'll move on to a slightly lighter shade to further blend up. Okay, so we're going to move on to our next shade, which is called Obituary. So this is what it is looking like right now. Like I said, not perfect. It definitely needs some blending out. We're just doing the shape to begin with. So Obituary is kind of the lightest matte red in this palette. And for me, just because I'm super fair, it's a little hard to create a look using this palette that isn't really dark and smoky, which is fine. I mean this palette obviously like that's what I will reach for it for to do kind of like darker smokier looks but if you have a deeper skin tone than mine you'll you'll probably find that this has a tendency to be able to be a little bit more versatile for you but since I'm literally white as a ghost <laughs> I will definitely only be getting smokier looks out of this which again is totally fine so i'm blending that initial color out just going higher with it and then i'm slowly going to start to work that into a shape around my crease as well and because this color is so dark i'm using 
very, 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 very little and just slowly starting to sketch that shape. And I'm gonna do the same thing, just kind of blending the color out on the bottom as well. What I'm gonna start doing now that I've created that kind of like general shape in there is I am going to take the bigger fluffy brush that is in the brush collection and I'm gonna dip into the shade Sandworm, which is the white color, and Obituary, the color that I've just been using. So I'm gonna do, this is a technique that I do quite often where I'm going to layer two shades together to create a lighter version of the shade. That is why I love having blacks and whites in a palette because you can alter any color that you want to be either a little bit darker or a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna take that brush whoop, and I'm gonna dip in between, let me see, how am I gonna do this? There we go. I'm gonna dip in between this shade here and this shade. So I'm gonna do one dip here, one dip here, and one dip back in that one. So I get kind of like a mixture of those colors and I'm gonna to start to create a transition shade out of that. And that'll give me kind of like, you see up here, I have that kind of like softer, I have a scar right here, so just please ignore it. <laughs> but I get that kind of like softer purpley color. So I do that by kind of sandwiching those colors together and blending them out. I'm gonna use this guy right here, the kind of bigger chubby guy that I like. And we're gonna take the shade Lydia all over the lid and kind of blend it up towards the crease. I'm also gonna take Lydia on the lower lash line, right on that kind of like inner half of the eye So next I'm going to add a color to my waterline. I'm going to use a lip liner in my waterline. If you are sensitive to lip products around the eye area, definitely don't do this. <laughs> you could get away with no eyeliner if you like. You could do a black, you could do a dark purple. Um, you can clash and try something entirely different. You could do like a lime green, like maybe the lime green gel liner. Um, whatever you're feeling, but I'm going to do red right now. Um, this is just a lip liner from MAC in Cherry. I use this in my waterline quite a lot. So I'm just going to quickly add that in there, which I feel like that really enhances the look. And now we're going to finish off with the inner corner. Pretty easy look. And again, I opted to use a color from the recently deceased palette instead of from the waiting room palette. I could have used, I mean, the white on the inner corner or like that sparkly color, or I could have continued the red around, but I just thought this kind of like sparkly greeny gold shade would be kind of pretty. Like it gives a little bit of like a spooky Christmas vibe. <laughs> We are done with our eyeshadow, so now let us try out this mascara. I tried it out on the other side, and I'm actually pretty impressed with it. The only thing that I'm like a little curious about is this collection is limited edition, so is the mascara gonna be limited edition too? because that might be a little heartbreaking because this is actually a really, really good mascara. So I'm really hoping that maybe they just repackage it in the future um, so that it doesn't have to be tied to the Beetlejuice campaign because it's actually a really, really nice mascara. And this is an awesome eyelash curler. It doesn't pinch and it definitely gives them a really, really nice curl. Hard to tell, but I guess you'll just have to take my word for it. So again, the brush of the mascara, it doesn't have like over, like way too much mascara on the wand when you first take it out, which is nice. It's not clumpy. It's definitely giving me length and volume. 
and it builds on itself nicely so I don't feel like I keep swiping it on and the brush is just like pulling the product off. This is a nice mascara and I almost always like mascaras usually like about two to three weeks after I've opened them versus when they're brand new. So to like a mascara straight out of the packaging, I know that in like two or three weeks, I'm gonna like it even more. But this looks really good. I think my eyelashes look really nicely like separated for just like a couple quick, like a pretty quick coat just then. Looks pretty good. So I'm going to add a pair of lashes on. The lashes that I chose today are from Likely Lashes. They come in this little box set. I believe these are the ones in the style sliced. Yeah, I think these are in the style sliced. Um, this one right here. So yeah, this is the little box set that they come in. Super cute. I love these lashes. <clears throat> so I'm going to put these on with another one of my favorite products, the Duo Brush On Lash Adhesive, and I use the Dark Tone. It's one of my absolute favorites. It is extremely sticky. You don't have to wait for a really long time after you apply the glue onto the lash band in order to put the lashes on. It gets really nice and tacky pretty quickly and it wears throughout the day better than most glues do for me. So it's definitely my favorite and they have it in the clear tone and dark tone, but I prefer the dark tone one. So lashes are on, eyes are finished. I am loving this eye look. I think it's really pretty. I'm obviously loving the quality of these palettes so far with the shades that I tried in the waiting room palette. The only critique that I have necessarily like, it, and really is just because of my skin tone is that there isn't a lighter kind of like transitional red shade but that's just kind of like nitpicking because that's only for my skin tone and obviously my skin tone does not dictate what should be in a palette. So that's not a problem for me and I can just look to this palette to be a darker, smokier palette, which is not a problem. And the um, recently deceased palette, I'm super excited to use this one a little bit more. The metallic green shade on the inner corner applied beautifully. So I will do another video creating a look using this palette because I need to. And I really want to use the purple and green gel liners to go with that. So we're going to finish up the look right now with a lip and I just can't help myself and I have to do the dark like glittery black color because it's just speaking to me and I have to do it. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to line my lips first actually with a melt lip liner. This is in the shade Blindfold. It's a black so by doing this, I mean, it's basically a blackened lipstick. So I think the black base is just going to help to make it a little bit more even. Also, I won't have to apply uh, quite uh, such a thick layer of that on top either. So I usually like to just take my beauty blender over my lips, kind of blank everything out to start with. And we'll start lining. Are lined and I always like to go in and fill in just kind of a thicker line around and smudge everything out so it's not like a super crisp precise line about around my mouth this just kind of helps blur the lip liner into the lipstick a little bit better so we're gonna add the electrip lip paint in the shade weirder and weirder on top
Okay, so lipstick is on. This color is absolutely beautiful. Again, with the absolutely beautifuls. But, I mean it. It, it is beautiful. Um, the more you kind of press your lips together, or the more you kind of play with it, the more sparkly this color becomes. It is, I mean, it's gorgeous. The, like, kind of blue, purple, pink reflect that you get really actually goes with this palette very nicely. It matches the kind of plummy tones that are in the darker red eyeshadows in the palette really nicely. So this, I mean, this is pretty. This I really like. If you love black lipstick, this is like a super elevated black lipstick. This looks even more amazing than black lipstick does. And, um, it feels super comfortable. It feels just as comfortable as their liquid lipsticks normally do. So it doesn't feel like it's about to crack off. And I think using the black lip liner was a good choice beforehand. Again, it just helps to be able to keep the layers on your lips more thin. That way I'm going to be able to keep this on for longer and I won't have to reapply. And I think we all know that reapplying liquid lipsticks can be tricky. So my overall thoughts is... I mean, not shockingly, that I love everything. Everything that I have tried has worked out beautifully for me. I'll let you guys know how this liquid lipstick wears probably on my Instagram. So make sure to head over to my Instagram so you can see what kind of my like long-term wear thoughts are on this. But from the packaging to the product quality, as always, melt entirely knocked it out of the park. It is a completely killer collection. If you're a big fan of Beetlejuice, I couldn't possibly recommend this enough to you, especially given the fact that this is super, super limited edition. So if you are looking on getting your, looking to get your hands on this, do it sooner rather than later because I'm sure that this is probably going to sell out in no time and they won't be bringing it back. Um, so that's going to conclude my super short, super quick, super simple video today. Um, if you guys have made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for all of the support that you guys have given me. And I am so beyond excited to be returning in what I'm optimistically saying will be a permanent return to YouTube. So um, definitely make sure to subscribe if you are liking what you see, like and comment to let me know what you guys are going to be interested in seeing in the future but I promise you I will not leave you hanging again I am here and I'm in it for the long haul this time so again thank you guys so much for watching and until next time I will see you later bye